Our Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer recently relaxed the unwritten dress code for what U.S. Senators can or can't wear inside the Senate chamber. That rule change is being criticized by congressional Republicans. Brian Todd is covering the story for us. Brian, what's the latest? Wolf, today, Democratic Senator John Fennerman gave us a jarring image. He presided over the Senate wearing a short sleeve shirt and shorts, which Republican Senator Rick Scott told me he thought was inappropriate. Tonight, a Senate known for its buttoned-up image is in an uproar over this change. He's six foot eight, weighs about 270, and walks around the Senate halls with a hoodie and shorts on. And he isn't a tourist. Democratic Senator John Fetterman of Pennsylvania, whose choice of attire has forced him to vote from the doorways rather than on the Senate floor under the Senate's previous unwritten dress code, today was seen proudly wearing those casuals while presiding over the Senate. The senator from Texas. Now that Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has relaxed the dress code. Almost every Republican senator has signed a letter spearheaded by Florida Senator Rick Scott calling on Schumer to keep enforcing the code. This has got to change back. We've got to have decorum. We've got to, um, we've got to address the way the American public would expect their U.S. senators to dress. Republican Senator Chuck Grassley saying it stinks. Senator John Kennedy saying... I don't like it. And Republican Senator Susan Collins joking, quote, I plan to wear a bikini tomorrow to the Senate floor. Some Democrats seem reluctant to criticize the change. Do you think it should be changed? I, I just think there's a whole lot more important things for us to worry about, so I'm fine. You know, as long as people cover all the private parts. I think you can have respect for the institution without a formal dress code, so long as individual members uh, take personal responsibility for upholding decorum. But Republicans are pressing, even on the House side. But you're going to change all the Senate rules simply so someone could wear gym clothes onto the floor? I mean, that's embarrassing. Fetterman today firing back, saying, quote, if those jagoffs in the House stop trying to shut our government down and fully support Ukraine, then I will save democracy by wearing a suit on the Senate floor next week. And telling MSNBC on Monday. The right have been, like, losing their mind, you know. They're just like, oh, my God, aren't there more important things we should be talking about rather than if, if I dress like a slob? While some senators like Kirsten Cinema often dress with flair, the Senate has expected business attire for centuries, with men understood to wear a suit and tie and women covering their arms. A senator without a tie would immediately leave the floor and fix the mistake. And Ronald Reagan famously would rarely set foot in the Oval Office without a coat and tie. One analyst says decorum has its place, but right now... We're heading headlong into what may be a sustained government shutdown. Uh, this is a distraction. This is a tempest in a uh, hoodie. Now, even Senator Fetterman says he's not sure if he'll always take advantage of the new rules. Fetterman was recently quoted as saying it's nice to have the option, but that he's planning on using the new dress code sparingly and not overusing it. Wolf? Brian Todd, thanks for that report. In the halls of the Senate, uh, old customs, you know, they die hard, but... All, uh, all but three Republican senators have now published a letter to the Senate Majority Leader, Chuck Schumer, criticizing his decision there to relax the chamber's dress code. That move was seen, at least, in response to Senator John Fetterman's preference for wearing shorts and a hoodie, and there he is on the screen, uh, looking as comfortable as ever. You've covered Capitol Hill for a long time. I've been in those halls. I, I remember, you know having to wear a jacket, even when it's 100 degrees outside in D.C. What do you make about the squabble over the dress code on Capitol Hill? Well, you're asking the wrong guy, because <laughs> as you know, seeing me in the halls, I wear a tie you and jacket. You are always dressed to, to the to nines, Chris Every Wallace. day. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe not Saturdays, but almost all the time. I, look, I, I, maybe there's some bending. I, I know the business casual has become the, the, the fashion or whatever, but really, in the United States Senate, a hoodie and shorts and sneakers, uh, I, you know, I, I'm not easily offended. And I mean, if, if they're going to go on this way, it's not the end of the, uh, uh, of the republic. But, gee, it does seem to me that, that saying that uh, Fetterman can dress like that and 
Uh, th then you had Susan Collins, uh, <laughs> a very uh, proper Republican senator from Maine, saying maybe she'll wear a bikini. <laughs> I, I actually think that, you know, if, 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 I, if it was a question of signing on the line about we need to have some kind of dress code that's a little better than the Fetterman standard, I probably would have signed. I mean, well, look, to be fair, there have been some Republicans who have dressed down in the Senate, too. There's Ted Cruz. Uh, he sometimes liked to, likes to wear his workout clothes on the Hill. Uh, former Senator Richard Burr was sometimes in a polo shirt and shorts and, and flip-flops. And, and let's be honest, I mean, when it comes to decorum, I don't think the dress code is the problem over on Capitol Hill. This has been a pretty rowdy Congress, if you ask me. I, I mean, is this just kind of making, you know, hay out of something that doesn't really matter all that much? A Abby, when you when you stop when you start with the tie, it's a slippery slope. I don't know where it goes. Who from knows there. what <laughs> could happen if, God forbid, you wear shorts. God forbid, women wear sleeveless dresses. Capitol Hill. Stay the same, always. Chris Wallace, you stay the same, too. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks, Abby.